Welcome to The Truth in His Heart. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today, I have the privilege of being in conversation with a self-taught American artist born in Chicago, Illinois. He currently lives and works in Baltimore, uh, known for a unique blend of colors, shapes, forms, and motifs inspired by dance and DJ culture, fashion, design, dreamscapes, and experimental vistas. Please welcome Terry Thompson. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. So well written intro is like I took it from a website. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty good. I like I like it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I've had a few people in the past. It's like, yo, I know I wrote that, but I'm gonna take what you said and use it. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, hey! If it works, it works, man. Go for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. So I want to start off with a very kind of general question. Um. You know, and again, thanking you for coming to the podcast. Can you tell us the, in the listeners um about your work? And what are the main ideas you're 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 working to express? Well, uh, my work has evolved over the years. Um, I've um, been doing this since 1990 when I moved to Baltimore. I had a loft space downtown. I had all the uh, empty wall space, and one of the things I wanted to do was try to decorate my apartment. And I couldn't afford to buy a whole bunch of paintings, so I knew I had some artistic skills because I took um, art classes all the way through high school. And so I um, started dabbling a little bit into um, creating. Um, I wanted to do something more abstract. Uh, before uh, my uh, ventures into Baltimore, I had spent many years um, doing a lot of um, realistic stuff. Um, you know, some of the artists that I kind of followed during high school were like Boris Vallejo and Frank Frank Zetta. Uh, they were like fantasy artists, if, if you've ever seen the, um, the books um, by... Um, um, uh, Conan the Barbarian or any yeah. of those of um, like the, the books that came out back in the seventies and stuff. Uh, they were the artists of those cover of those covers. And so uh, I was a big fan of them. And I, I did that when I was in high school um, besides the classical training stuff that I learned um, over the four years that I had, you know, um, painting classes with my teacher. Uh, but um, as an adult, like I really got into like more abstract stuff. I wanted to um, kind of develop my own style. So, uh, moving into the apartment gave me opportunity to like, like experiment. So I, um, I got a couple of canvases and started to form these like little eyes, kind of abstract shapes. Uh, I'm definitely a big fan of Basquiat, so I had some of that early influence with with um, with those earlier uh, pieces. But I wanted to like create my own style, and um, so what happened is that somebody. Um, you know, bought the works and I'm like, okay, I guess I got a career now. <laughs> if they want to give me money for it. Uh, and uh, I had an exhibition. Uh, one of the local promoters saw my work and put it into his, um, his um, party and uh, a local um, artist, um, Jeffrey Kent, he, uh, he saw the work and he had a little gallery over on, on Charles street called hands original. And um, he basically gave me my first show. Uh, and that was, that was, beginning of everything and um and so 30 years into it i've been um uh creating my own, own my own style over the years i kind of like you know went between figurative work to abstract i play around with um uh, oils uh I, I really got really known for my collage work uh because i um got i went to um the Ramiro Bearden exhibition back in 1983 and I saw that and I really wanted to um, try to create something uh, with that same kind of style yeah. uh, and uh, influence and so uh, but I wanted to do it in my own way so I kind of like took the elements of using paper and I just basically use it as paint so I would try to find you know uh, 20 or 30 magazines are the same magazine with the same colors in there and I cut it up and I'll they say, you know, I got I got a piece and and put together and then people are like, dude, you're on something there. <laughs> and uh yeah, that was that was that was that was really where everything took off when I first started doing those collage works. But um a good friend of mine I met in Baltimore, his name is um Salvador Brew. He's um he passed away. But um uh, he's a Spanish painter and um he had a big huge loft downtown um in a piano factory mm -hmm. and um i had a chance to meet him and 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 went into his studio and i saw these massive pieces of work that he was doing like you know 20 by 25 feet wow. and uh yeah that yeah that studio was huge and uh, he was i've never seen anybody like you know 
do any work of that scale, um, you know, personally knowing him and stuff. So uh, he he really taught me uh, the the fact is that really I got I got to master the painting because um you know he said the collages are nice and stuff and people you know gonna gonna gravitate to that and stuff but really you have to master the painting and I was doing both of them at the same time so um yeah it kind of worked out for me because um I was just applying a lot of the colors that I had in the collage work and and, and working in the painting I played around between figurative work and then I got into more more like all abstract probably in the last like 10 years and stuff but um i still go back and forth when it comes to um playing around with it but um the uh things that influenced me are you know definitely the music i mean i'm in i'm in the music all the time because i you know i spent many years as a dj and i listen to music uh, in the studio um all the time so they're all intertwined in terms of um being able to do both of those those um disciplines yeah, at the same time Thank you. Thank you for, for um, running, running through that for us and sharing, sharing those, those beginnings and some of those ideas that you're, you're working um, to express. Um, so you, you touched on uh, Frank Franzetta, you, you, and uh, I've read that, you know, album covers, magazine images and posters were those kind of early inspirations growing up. Is there a piece of, of that sort of art that really comes to mind um, that has a particularly strong memory for you? And what about it sticks out? And I, and I, I did look up the uh, Frank Franzetta like Conan and I was like, oh, I know this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, well, um, I don't paint like those guys anymore. I mean, that's since high school. Yeah. Uh, but if I if I had to think about any of the works that really you know stand out that you know from the test of time that's really like been been embedded in my psyche as far as a, as an artistic piece, uh, I would have to say you know being from Chicago, um, my mom and grandma they took me to see the Picasso uh, statue that's in front of the um, Civic Center. And yeah. I think I saw it. I think I saw it in like nineteen. I'm dating myself. Nineteen seventy three or four when it first got um installed into chicago um and that that piece of work has been in my psyche since then um and you know looking at it now i'm looking at it like okay i can see a lot of his african influence in that piece uh and you know maybe it was something that you know that i had i don't you know my conscious you know subconscious thing i was like um you know it's just always been there so yeah, I, I can say that 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 has been, um, you know, something that's been you know, with me for a long time. Um, but, you know, as a, as an artist in high school, mm-hmm. you know, you have to learn classical work. So I, I my um, the the artists that I kind of gravitated to back in that were part of like school projects were like the fr- we had to do French and stuff. So I did a lot of um, uh, uh, karate. Yeah. Um, I think his name is John John Mike Michel Kratt was the um, French painter, and he did a lot of landscapes and, th- and stuff like that. I was really intrigued by his um, works um, in high school. Um, my friends that I had class with, they were doing a lot of um, fantasy art. Uh, yeah. So because uh, you know, at that time we had movies like um, Close Encounter, The Third Kind, um, Space Odyssey uh, was still you know, being on rotation a lot. Um, uh, Space Odyssey, I think the TV series that came out um, mm-hmm. around that same time too. Um, so, yeah, so they they were doing it. We were doing album covers. Me and my friends, uh, we were copying like the problem of Funkadelic album <laughs> covers or um, Brother Johnson's, uh, you know, anything that we wanted to like, you know, try to give homage to um, and actually, you know, use our, our artistic skills uh imply that um and but i i had different kind of fr- you know friends in school so uh some of my friends they were into the music stuff and then i had other friends that were like artists like um kevin hayes he was a, um in my high school class uh, we had study hall together and he did a lot of um realistic stuff so and 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 so i kind of followed him along along mm-hmm. that way too cuz he was really uh, doing a lot of nudes and so we'll get playboy magazines and we're just <laughs> like yeah we just like be at study hall draw, drawing these girls and and uh, <laughs> you know doing trying to get as, as close to the real thing as we could and um you know my my uh friends that i work with uh, in the restaurant say oh yeah i got to take you down to the um to the playboy um 
company downtown. And, uh, you know, Playboy Headquarters was in Chicago at the time and said, we got to get you a job with Levo Le- Neiman and all those guys, man. Like, <laughs> I'm like I don't know if I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, th- 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 that, was, that was a good time because, um, you know, you're doing, uh, we, you know, at, at that time we were doing so much stuff like, you know, playing basketball, running, biking, fishing, uh, having so much fun. Um, and we just did stick with one thing. And, 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 um, that's kind of what I do right now is I, I have a lot of different interests and a lot of different things. So that's why I, sometimes, you know, people see me, see me and they see a lot of pro- pro- promotions or, or plugs around me DJing. I think we're <laughs> artists. Yeah. And then they, then they see the, the artist guys will say, I see you, I want you DJing here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or or they, they might see a record come out and they said, uh, I heard you produce this record. I say, yeah, I produce one or two, but not a whole bunch of, them. but, uh, yeah, it's like, um, it's like, but it, it is all, it all works together for me. You yeah. know, the, the fashion stuff, uh, always been a fan of, of, um, fashion since like, um, uh, since I moved into Loft, I would watch, um, the uh, uh, what was it? Um, CNN. Yeah, uh, Elsa Clinch on on Saturdays, every Saturday, ten o'clock a.m. I was t- tuned into it to the fashion show and watching Claude, uh, Claude Monet and uh, uh, all of the different designers that they had back then, Jeffrey Bean and all that stuff. So, yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. And I, and I think it's important to have like multiple things that you're into is like not to be in a box and kind of doing what you enjoy and contributing to whatever it is, contrib- contributing to the medium, whether it is doing, you know, you know, collage work, doing paintings, uh, DJing, you know, there's multiple things. And I think creators got to create, you know, artists got to, got to do the art thing, you know? And I, I think it's like, I like seeing people do different things. It's like, Oh, okay. You're trying something different versus this idea that, you know, some people will put upon you. You're supposed to stick to this one lane. Now I can do a little bit of everything. Well, that's, that's true. I mean, I think, uh, for, for at least for me as an artist, I think the freedom of being an artist is being able to do what you want to do. So, so if that the uh, the market is is one way. Um, I don't really necessarily follow that trend. I mean, um, I might not, you know, have the the, the uh, audience or the voice that's you know popular today, but you know, my audience may be around five hundred years from now. You know, maybe something yeah. like that. Uh, so, so yeah, I um, yeah, I create, I create what I like to create, and yeah. I um, and one thing about being in Baltimore is that you you have such a luxury of being able to create here without uh, have a a lot of distractions. Uh, I think, uh, for at least for me, is that is that um, uh, it's a quiet city. I mean, although it's like crazy sometimes, but um, <laughs> it, as far as like you know, crime, crime, and all that kind of stuff. But um, if you are just really just doing your own thing in your own bubble, it's kind of a quiet town, and you don't have to like um, you know be distracted from. Like if, if the, there's a bunch of if I was in New York, it'd be like I'd be out in the club all all the time or you know partying, <laughs> yeah. go to some fashion show or whatever, and ne- never get any work done. But here I can get work. I can get work done. I can you know raise a family. I can do all these things and not have all the pressures that that come with living in an, in an, um, a big city like that. And I um, mean, also it it also influences the work that I do because I can go from. You know, if the if the if it Baltimore is kind of dull, I can paint. I can paint bright. You know, I can do bright things in my studio. I can paint things that lighten things up. Yeah. And then when there's too much stim, you know, stimulus in the in the uh, in the um like the air and stuff like there's too much um you know energy. I can tone it down. I can go. You know, I can do black and white stuff. Yeah, so. Well, and and I think that leads me into this this next question I wanted to ask you, and uh, let's let's talk about color a little bit. What role does color play in your artwork, and also, um, what what does it play into the fashion side of things? Because you're into clothes and you're into fashion, so tell me about that when it comes to like, does a certain color work better with a certain texture, a certain textile, um, and what does that color may mean in your work? So tell me about that. Um, well, uh, the, co- the colors, the, um, I am uh, like attracted to a lot of colors. So, so when I go into, um, like the art supply store, I kind of go through and I um, pick out things that are, you know, appealing to me as far as the colors are concerned. And, um, I work in oil. So oils allows me to, you know, blend a lot of different colors easy. Um, I can, 
I can let it, I can work on things and, and, um, and then I can manipulate them a little bit later because the drying process is, is longer. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I like the way that the oils really like, you know, they have a rich, rich, you know, color compared to like, like the, um, pastels or, or the um, watercolors or, or acrylic. So, but as far as, um, what, you know, what motivates me, I think that, you know, if I think about colors, I think about like, you know, reds, blues and, and, and oranges and stuff. And I really like to make those things pop off the canvas as, as much as I can. Um, and I like to blend things that is more, it's more natural for me. I, cause I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not like a person who's, who, um, sit down and, and say, okay, I'm going to take this red tube and we're going to mess it with this green tube and I'm going to come up with this color or whatever. Everything is on the fly. So, yeah. uh, so in my studio, you'll see, you'll see, um, the, uh, these, these like bowls uh, of different mixtures of uh, paint, some of them are half dry, some of them all way dry, but, uh, it's just like this big palette of, of, of colors uh, at the time. And, 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 you know, and they're also time stamp too, because the works that I did 20 years ago are not the same color. Uh, they are mm. in terms of, um, uh, like they're bright, but, uh, as an artist, you can see that I'm using different paints today. I'm using what, uh, what we have available today. And so I can get a lot deeper with the colors that are coming out now because they're always new colors that come out. And then you find different ways of painting because um, I have my own studio techniques and stuff. So things that I, were do I was doing back in, in, in the early 90s and stuff, um, I am not doing that anymore because I, uh, that was pretty much following the same uh, path and in, in, in of historical painting that I learned in school. Mm -hmm. But, but now, you know, I'm, you know, 30 years in it is that, um, or oh, I would say roughly around 15 years ago, I started to figure out my own technique that yeah. is unique to, to my work. And so now I'm able to take those colors and give it more and more, um brightness than yeah. there before because i was using the canvas to do a lot of the work and and the canvas absorbs a lot of the colors i mean that's yeah. what that's what that's what canvas is supposed to do um so i figured out a way how to to like layer things up and have it where it's like the colors are bouncing off the canvas and not yeah. being absorbed by the by the um uh, that the paint game is all about the campus as much as what what's really taught early on um, by artists, you know, uh, historically. So, um, yeah, covering up with that, that's good. And as far as the fashion stuff, um, I mean, um, I mean, I'm, 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 you know, it's, I'm more, I'm more um, attracted to the clothing of women um, mm -hmm. by that are that are by the designers. And and it and it intrigues me that they use a lot of of uh, painterly style in their design. So yeah. so um, you can see a lot of the influence that they have as far as you know picking their fabrics and things like that. It's the same thing what an artist would do if I were going to the studio and picking up you know paint um, tubes. They just using a different you know way of uh, presenting their their. Um, uh, their images and stuff mm -hmm. is that they, they, they're basically cutting the fabric just like, like artists would be cut, you know, painting. So, so, uh, I, so that's, a, that's what it is for me is that I, when I see like, you know, uh, a fashion show and stuff, um, I look at it, okay, they pick this fabric, they pick these colors, they use this backdrop to help emphasize the, the, the fabric a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about like, you know, f fabric design or anything like that, or, or patterns that they use or any of that stuff. I didn't, you know, I don't go into all of that yeah. technical stuff, but um, I do like the, um, the theatrics of it. That's, that's pretty much what I like. I dig it. Uh, so I, I want to, I want to ask you this. We, we talked a little bit about your, um, about your influences, right? And, you know, I read Pascasco's in there, um, Henry Moore, Basquiat, Michelangelo. And I, I, I heard this thing about comparison kills creativity. Mm -hmm. So 
can you tell me about like who or or what are like anti like motivations or anti influences because those exist we always ask people about their influences and their motivations for their work but mm-hmm. we never really get into why what kind of takes away from your work what kind of like hinders you within the process and i'm at a interesting spot from my own standpoint where you know there can only be like two podcasters or two people covering and having conversations. So naturally Mm -hmm. people are almost forcing this comparative thing and well, you did an interview with this person and it wasn't as good as that interview and and so on. So tell Mm -hmm. me about that. Like those, those kind of anti influences. Yeah. um, Well, I try, um, I don't even try. I just, it's just a natural thing for me is not to um, be um, kind of like sidetracked. Yeah. with um uh, other artists i mean i i uh, i um i do f- follow with artists are doing like uh you know friends of mine like uh derek adams you know he's 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 um someone that we started out doing work early on in the 90s and stuff i'll follow i follow a lot of what he's doing um that it, it doesn't really um influence what i do as yeah. far as you know because um you know his success his success matrix is what works for him you know yeah. um and i think that that is for other artists i mean i follow you know rasheed johnson i follow you know so many um artists uh, uh you know of course you know ramir bidden back in the old days and you know he was you know his um his collage work was um was amazing and um looking at you know i think we get ideas from other artists you know for me it, I look at some earth artists work and I'll say, okay, all right. If they working on this kind of skill, um, you know, what are the, the logistics to it, you know, in terms of like getting the right material or they present something in a certain way, uh, make sure that, you know, if I, let me try, see how that works for me as far as like, you know, having painting side by side or, you know, two inches apart. It does, does the uh, work, uh, show well when you do that. Um, yeah. I mean, th- those those kind. Of, I mean, it's more like technical stuff. Yeah. Uh, instead of um, styles. I mean, I think that a lot of artists. Uh, they're only because for me, everything for me is is all in, in you know imagination. It's all it's all whatever I can think of. You know, so I I can't really like you know get. Um, I really don't get inspired by other artists to do what they do because um i'm doing it from within yeah you know it's, it, and so what i'm doing today is not going to be what i'm doing tomorrow because uh, i'm always coming up with new ideas and i and love that so, yeah love that. so 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 yeah so for me it's like it the studio is a lab you know it's for me to come here and experiment i work I work by myself i'm here by myself all the time so so for me it's, it's a place to discover um, and, uh, it's good to see what other artists do because I, I, I get to discover what they're doing. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't, you know, and, um, but as far as how it influences my work, um, I don't, you know, I don't really let it get, um, kind of, you know, influence what I'm doing. Saying if I see somebody's like having a good show or they have, they having this success this way, I'm not an artist that would try to emulate that. I would just continue on my path of doing my thing and, you know, and, and as far as like, uh, uh, you know, have a negative influence is, it's only if you allow it to, um, mm. if you allow you, if you allow it to compromise what you're doing. So yeah. for me, I would never let any artist that's doing something else compromise what I'm doing. Even if the, even if an artist comes into my studio and they say, oh, why don't you hang it this way? Or why don't you paint this over that? And I say, oh yeah, that's, that's sounds <laughs> interesting. Um, but <laughs> But I was, I was, I would say at that point it'd be your painting. <laughs> no, I dig it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be mine. It'd be you. It'd be you painting on and giving me instructions on how to paint. So, uh, I, I would not do it. Just the fact is that uh, the canvas is for me to discover, and um, mm. and I want to be able to discover things on my own and and do it. That's what. Um, and I, now, as far as like you know, like uh, I just say, for instance, like. DJ and stuff like that, which is, you know, you can have one DJ versus another, you know, have a kind of different kind of like um, uh, platform, both of them using the same you know, materials. Like, you know, you're talking about you, you, you having a podcast and another, another um, 
host is having another podcast where you got technical ways of doing things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at DJs, we kind of, you know, I, I, I say this to young guys too. I say, you got to develop your own style. You yes. Know, I, you got 20 records. I can give you the same 20 records, but I'm going to play those 20 records different from you. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going I'm yeah. to blend them. I'm going to blend them totally different from you. I'm going to put them in a way that you would not even think of because uh, it's coming within. Now, if I'm trying to follow your your steps, you know, how you do it, then I'm just basically copying you. You know, I'm just saying. Yeah. And, and what's and what's really in that? Like when, you know, I work in a kind of commission sort of space or what have you, and someone may ask me to do some interviews or be a host or help consult or whatever. Right. And right. and they're like, oh, well, I would do it this way. I was like, well, you, you hired me. So do you want what I know or do you want to do it your way and just use it? Because just so I know. Right. And yeah. I, I think, and I think your example right there with the DJs, like here's 20 records or what have you. If it's just, here's, I got five questions, you know, I'm going to ask this. I can, I can, like, I'm so confident in the fact that if I ask those questions, they can be the same questions, worded the same way. It's because of how I operate and how I go about it, my style, mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to get a much different answer from the guest or from the person I'm interviewing than my contemporary may be if they're asking the same questions. It's just a matter of style. It's a matter of how I go about it. And, you know, I, I'm going to have a different perspective on it. I'm going to truly just come into a situation curious and really want to know. And there's an earnestness in there that, you know, you can't replicate. It's, it's, it's embedded in me. It's who I am. You know what I mean? Right. That, that's true. I mean, uh, you have your own style. I can, I can tell by, you know, your whole interview process is that you have your own unique way of doing things and, and it's unique to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, each each host or, you know, commentary or whatever, they all have their own different style. You know, Stephen A. Smith on um, <laughs> on uh, what is he on ESPN or Network Windows? Yeah, uh, ESPN. Yeah, ESPN. His, I mean, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's crazy. You know, you, you enjoy him, but he's not the same as you know the other guys. You know, so yeah. it's like you know, so you everybody. Get, I think you have to be be uh, genuine in, in your own way because um, they start calling their personalities, right? Right, it is personality. Yeah, you have your own personality. I mean, there's some things that you know. Of course, that there, there are some success matrix probably out there in terms of okay, if you follow this matrix, like if I wanted to get into a museum yeah. today, mm -hmm. if I wanted to have an exhibition and get into a museum today, today it seems like in order to do that as a black artist, you have to paint like pretty much black figurative work. Mm -hmm. That's what it. That's what it seems like as from outside looking in. Yeah. Um, but you know, I personally wouldn't do that. You know, I would I wouldn't necessarily try to change my style to try to be, get picked up by a uh, gallery or or or, um, or to be um, placed in the museum because the museum um, the museum's mission right now is to place black art 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 and artists at the same time. They want to do both of them. I, I want to continue on my same my path yeah. that I've been doing as a, as an artist is to create the things that I like to do, and yeah. and I want I want people to see the work and see that it's me. You know, it's not something that's that's um, different from you know um, uh, from uh, just you know doing. Com it, it would be pretty much like doing commission work. And yeah, I and I do that. and I and I think with it, it it's it's this thing where do like. You know, it's like, does the market dictate what it is in that I, I remember, you know, you should do this type of thing. You should do this type of podcast. Um, you should do this kind of barbershop kind of, you know, almost like the, the what the athletes do, like the uh, LeBron James like podcast or radio show, or TV show that he had. And I was yeah. like, I've done that before and I have my own version of that. That's not something I'm interested in. I'd rather do something that I'm curious about that I can yeah. obsess over and keep wanting to, to ask these questions and keep mm -hmm. wanting to get these stories. Those are the things that really interest me me. And, you know, I like the way that you put it earlier and I'm, I'm going to steal that. I'm just letting you know, yeah, of, go for it. you know, it's, it's a lab and that's really what it is. And, you know, I'm going to experiment with questions or asking people things in a certain way. And, you know, this is the first time today, this is the first time that I've done this many interviews in one day. Um, you were my sixth interview of the day. Wow. And, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm out here. I'm obsessing. And, you know, <laughs> But in it, each one, I feel like I didn't drag on it. I feel like I was able to and I, I able to kind of put forth the same effort, the same attention and the same degree of quality in it. And I think that 
that's something I w- wouldn't learn if I was trying to do what someone else is doing, you know, or trying yeah. to follow what someone else is like, oh, you should only do like one per day or you should only do it at this time or this many people. I'd rather just go with what my gut says and let that drive it. My gut, my taste, what I think is good and be accountable for it. If it turns out that it's not good, then I'm the person that's that's kind of judging it. I might hit you back like, hey, Terry, can we do that interview over? I think I was mid, you know, <laughs> but I think but I think we've gone well here. Yeah, yeah no, no, it's, it's it, I mean, that's that's the beautiful thing about being an artist. I mean, you are your artist in your 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 field. Um, I'm an artist in my field. And so being an artist means is that you are really taking chances you're you're exploring you're going out there and and trying to investigate and find your own niche and and discover things that worked for you um and if you don't do that you know you pretty much you know not giving yourself a chance because uh uh you know as artists you artists say okay hey let me try this you know if it doesn't work you know i'll try to try something else you know that's and that's what we do we kind of sit in the sit around and explore all the time. So I got, I got one more real question for you before mm-hmm. I get to those rapid fire questions. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, okay. more about your, your background as a, um, as a DJ. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. I read that your well-known veteran club DJ producer, promoter with releases um, on the London uh, UK uh, record label that de- defected. Tell me about creating um, in that like dance DJ community and perhaps how that's embedded and baked into your, your art practice, your painting practice. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in the, in the disco era. Um, let's see here. 1976 was my freshman year. And I think that, uh, yeah, a buddy of mine gave me for Christmas. This would have been uh, like the December, uh, the album um, from the soundtrack of Saturday Live. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, with our John Travolta. Yeah. So um that had all the Travaras and, and all the little songs on there and stuff. So we were big, big fans of um disco early on because um we're in the high school. So mm-hmm. so um and two years into high school, um my friend um Bruce Thomas, he needed help DJing a party that he ran out this um VFW. That's what they did back in in the seventies and stuff. Or you either ran out of high school or or VFW because they people can get access to those, charge two dollars and, and go for it. But um, in order for him to play, be able to play, he needed another person because he had one turntable, I had the other turntable. We switched from channel to channel, yeah. uh, just uh, between records. That was the beginning, and then as we got more money, we got more sophisticated equipment and stuff and getting a radio shack mixer for the six nine six uh sixty nine dollars being able to call ourselves blending to get blending records together the really wasn't blending them well i don't think um um you know looking back at it and stuff what i know now but that was uh you know during high school and by the time i got out of high school i think i was good enough to actually play in a, cl- in a club like get hired or stuff um went to uh california played out there what where i really took off is i um I, I was in hawaii and um and that had like like um tons of tons of nightclubs tons of tons of tourists so i was working basically every weekend in different places every different clubs and stuff so um and uh, i just kept going at it and uh, it has always been uh, something that was you know um kind of kind of attracted to you know the art stuff was a natural thing i mean i've been drawn since as a kid so that's more of a natural thing this was something that i learned you know learn how to do i learned how to dj learn how to mix records learn how to do the um you know understanding the mechanics of um of mixing records you know beats per minute you know getting this this machine to measure the beats per minute i mean now you got you got the um, turntable they uh, the the um, CDJs they pretty much tell you what the beats are right now. You have to do all that stuff. But back in the old days, we had to figure out the, the beats and the keys of the song and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it was like you know, it was fun. It's like you know, you go in there, you you put together, um, you know, your set, get it get it ready for the nightclub. Um, I I worked at a lot of places that were like um, 
I would say if we compare it today, it would be like top 40 because, I mean, dance music was top 40 back then. So so, um, so we played everything that was like good. I mean, if it was good and it was danceable, it, it was in the club. It, well, I didn't get into the underground stuff until I came to Baltimore, pretty much. Um, but the, um, uh, yeah, d- doing the DJ stuff is, is always been um, something that's been, um, you know, an interest of me uh, as it got more and more sophisticated. I mean, with those big clubs back in the seventies and in the discotheques, I like, I, I want to be like that guy up there that's, <laughs> that's up in the tower trying to, you know, DJ in this, like, you know, I don't know how big this club was because I was 16, but it was called a library yeah. in the suburbs where I lived at. And, uh, and, um, and there was an older guy, you know, I get a white, white guy with mustache and curly hair, you know, looking down on us and playing, you know, I can remember the song, knock, knock, knock on wood, just panning across the, <laughs> the speakers and stuff. I mean, they were like, like those, those fun times. And then, you know, as we got older, we like, we, we got to learn how to do this ourselves. <laughs> and, and, and uh, yeah, it became a fun thing. And then, you know, getting into the club stuff and then actually working and then um, getting into playing at underground clubs like in Baltimore, I came to Baltimore and I got, you know, I started, I, I uh, actually did my first party in Baltimore and I, there's a club called Signal and I uh, rented it out and I um, brought in um, Mickey Oliver from Chicago. He was one of the uh, famous DJs from Hot Mix 5. I brought him here. I said, well, like I said, why is this place empty? Uh, let's, tr- let's try to f- pack this place up. You know, I was like, you know, new to the town. I really didn't know all the, Mc- the, um, politics of the city and stuff, but I wanted to do it and I did it and it was fun. And um, then I ended up meeting like Wayne Davis uh, when he had Club Fantasy and I did parties for him. Um, then uh, I, um, you know, just kept going and I read Maple, Good Love Club, Good Love Bar, and lo- lots of venues in, around Baltimore and D.C. Um, has been um, um, my thing for like the last 30 years. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. And Mm -hmm. um, I think that's kind of a good place for us to stop there. We were able to get it in. And I think now I can go into these uh, rapid fire questions, um, if if that's okay with you. Um, Sure. So I got I got a group of them and, and pretty much with these, we just want to try to answer these as quickly as possible because, you know, rapid fire, people are like, I don't know if that is my favorite movie or what have Hmm. you. So we're getting into the nitty gritty a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, So here's the first one. I'm going to throw a softball for you. what is your favorite TV show right now that you you watch recently that you binge? Just what's a, what's the favorite? What's your favorite show right now? Um, I was I like in in the dark. Okay, it's a it's a TV show. Um, I think it's on um, C C W. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it's it's based in Chicago, so that that kind of intrigued me. And then there's a uh, a um, a actress on there that I I kind of chat with every once in a while. Um, she's on that show, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Uh, Next question I got for you. Uh, what was the last song that you listened to? Like, because you're you're a music guy. So, what was the last song that you listened to? Oh, right before this podcast, uh, American uh, America is the, is the band in uh, the Sandman. Okay, Tin Man, yeah, Tin Man and the Sandman. Those um, two songs. Uh, they were they were big artists back in the seventies. Uh, if you like Woodstock and the Woodstock music, yeah. yeah. What is your mm-hmm. favorite drink? Lemonade. Let's go on. Like lemonade, like a nice, yeah. nice cold lemonade on a hot day. Like yeah, lemonade is good. Yeah, lemonade yeah. is good. Uh, so, what dish? And it's, it's it's too left. Uh, what dish do you cook best? Are you are you cooking? Are you throwing down in the kitchen? What dish do you cook best? Shoot, I cook a lot of stuff. Um, I would <laughs> say uh, let's go with um, the carbonara. Okay, you kind of kind of went left field there. All right, cool. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, yep. Okay, this is the last one. Uh, you've been here. You know, Baltimore is is where you're at now. Is is I guess it's home now for you. Chicago is always your place, but is, you know, Baltimore is home now. I suppose. Yes. Des- describe Baltimore in three words. Fun, uh, expl- uh, experimental, and I would say it is kind of um, I would say groovy. Yeah, those three. I like it. So there you have it, folks. Um, that's that's it. I'm, I want to thank you uh, um, for coming on to the podcast and uh, indulging me and talking and chopping it up with me a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I want to invite and encourage you to tell the listeners where to find you, where to check out some of your work, your social media, website, all of that good stuff. So the floor is yours. 
Rob, well, thank you for having me, man. It's been interesting and it's been a, a wonderful conversation. I'm glad we finally get the chance to meet each other. Uh, as far as the audience, where you can check out my work, uh, you can check it out at thompsonstreet.com. That's Thompson Street spelled out, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, street, S-T-R-E-E-T.com. Um, I'm on social media at um, Hype Chart on Twitter, uh, Kapitza on AOL, and Kapitza on Instagram. Che Pizza, C-H-E-P-I-Z-Z-A at AOL.com is my email address. So there you have it, folks. I want to again thank Terry Thompson for coming on to the podcast. And I'm Rob Lee saying that there's art in and around Baltimore. You just got to look for it. <laughs> <laughs>